Hello Honors Chemistry students, this is Mr. Spurk, and this is your Mole Mass and Mole Volume Relationships, Chapter 10, Section 2. The Mole Mass Relationship. So we can use the molar mass of an element or a compound to convert between the mass of a substance and the moles of a substance. And the conversion factor that we'll have is the molar mass of that element, which we typically would write as grams per mole. And that number symbol is just whatever that number may be. So if we do, for example, carbon, which has a molar mass of 12.01 grams per mole, we can set up two conversion factors. We can use 12.01 grams of carbon for every one mole, or we can use one mole is equal to 12.01 grams of carbon. So we're going to use these both ways, just like we've done with other conversion factors in the past. We're able to flip them in order to manipulate them how we need them. So for example, items made out of aluminum, such as aircraft parts and cookware, are resistant to corrosion because the aluminum reacts with oxygen in the air to form a coating of aluminum oxide. What is the mass in grams of 9.45 moles of aluminum oxide? So what we're going to do is we are going to go from moles to grams. And in order to do that, we need the molar mass of aluminum oxide. So what we have to do is take our calculator and like we've been doing, um, we need to calculate the molar mass. So the molar mass of aluminum oxide or Al2O3 is 101.96 grams per mole. So that's the key piece of information that we need. Now we know that right now we have 9.45 moles of aluminum oxide and it wants the mass in grams. So we start with what we have and that's 9.45 mole Al2O3 and we're going to use that molar mass that we just added up to get um, as our conversion factor to convert to grams. So we know that there are 101.96 grams of Al2O3 for every one mole of Al2O3. We can see that mole cancels with mole, and we're going to be left with our unit of gram, which is good. That's what we're looking for. So when we multiply this across, we get 0 0.0927 mole. Al2O3. All right, so let's use that the other way. When iron is exposed to air, it corrodes to form a red brown rust. Rust is iron 3 oxide. How many moles of iron 3 oxide are contained in 92.2 grams of pure Fe2O3? So here we're going grams to moles. So notice that to go back and forth between the two, we're going to need the molar mass. So here we're starting with 92.2 grams of Fe2O3. But we need the molar mass of Fe2O3. So we need to take the time to add that up. And when we add that up, we get a molar mass of 159.7 grams per mole. So 159.7 is how many grams are in every mole of Fe2O3. So gram cancels with gram. And we multiply across, divide by the bottom. And when we do that, we get 0.577 mole Fe2O3. We're going to use this conversion quite often. So that was the mole mass relationship. Now is the mole volume relationship. The volumes of one mole of different solids and liquids are not the same. And we'll see this in a lab later this week. So think about the volume or mass of a dozen donuts compared to a dozen eggs compared to a dozen cars. 
The number of each is the same. There are 12 donuts, 12 eggs, and 12 cars, but they all have different masses and they all have different volumes. Same is true for elements and compounds. So Avogadro's hypothesis, he, it states that equal volumes of gases at the same temperature and pressure contain equal numbers of particles. So even though carbon dioxide and oxygen are much different in size, one mole of each has the same number of particles. So whether the particles are large or small, they take up the same volume because gases space out. So here might be our oxygen atoms, which are smaller than our carbon dioxide molecules, but you can see that they both still take up the same amount of space. And that's as long as that as they are at the same temperature and pressure. So the mole of O2 takes up the same uh, volume as a mole of CO2. So the volume of a gas varies with change in temperature and pressure. So we have something called standard temperature and pressure, or STP. The standard temperature is zero degrees Celsius, and the standard pressure is one atmosphere, or 101.3 kilopascals. These are numerical values that we want to be familiar with. So at STP, or at standard temperature and pressure, one mole, or 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd representative particles, of any gas occupies a volume of 22.4 liters, which is known as the molar volume of a gas. So one mole equals 20, one mole of gas at STP, sorry, I'm crunching that in there, equals 22.4 liters. So we can write that as one mole over 22.4 liters or 22.4 liters for every one mole. So for example, sulfur dioxide is a gas produced by burning coal. It is an air pollutant and one of the causes of acid rain. Determine the volume in liters of 0 0.60 mole of sulfur dioxide gas at STP. So we already know that we have 0 0.60 mole of sulfur dioxide, also known as SO2, remember from last chapter. And we're going to convert that to liters. So all we need, since this is at STP, we are good to use our conversion factor. So I know that for every one mole of SO2, I'm going to have 22.4 liters of SO2. And when I multiply that through, I get an answer of 13 liters of SO2. So we can also use the molar mass to calculate density. So a gas filled air balloon will either sink or float in the air, and that depends on whether the density of the gas inside the balloon is greater or less than the density of the surrounding air. Gases all have different densities, and gas density is measured in grams per liter at specific temperatures. So the density of a gas at STP and the molar volume at STP can be used to calculate the molar mass of that gas. Similarly, the molar mass of a gas and the molar volume at STB, STP can be used to calculate the density. The density of a gaseous comp so let's look at an example. The density of a gaseous compound containing carbon and oxygen is found to be 1.964 grams per liter at STP. What is the molar mass of this compound? So what we're going to do is we need to take this density and convert it to a molar mass. So one thing we want to keep in mind here is what is the unit for molar mass? The unit for molar mass is not grams. The unit for molar mass is grams per mole. So we need to take this 1.964 grams per liter and convert it to grams per mole. So let's start with 1.964 grams 
per liter. And we're going to use that molar volume ratio to get grams per mole. Because we know that 22.4 liters of gas is equivalent to one mole. Now think about why we put 22.4 liters on the top. We want liter to cancel with liter. And if you look at what units I have left, grams divided by mole. So I'm going to go ahead, calculate this out, and I get 43 sorry, 43.99 grams per mole. As always, all the information on these slides has been acquired and adapted from Pearson Chemistry, 2012 edition of the textbook, the resources CD, and pearsonchem.com. Have a great day.